What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. Well, I appreciate you being here. Ladies and gentlemen, the legend that is Matt Gunner for Fresh the Last! Yeah, hell yeah! What's up? What's up? How you yes! Hell thank, yeah. thank you, sir, for doing this. I, I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, Genesis is so fantastic, bro. We, we're jamming it right now as you popped in. Why now? How did this song come about with, with Travis and D? How did this all start? Um, fuck, man. I don't know. Like, like basically, uh, you know, COVID happened, right? And then it threw the world in disarray. And I feel like over time, as that went away and we've all gotten accustomed to being normal again, um me and travis have had conversations like damn dude it'd be sick to do some fftl stuff and we're just like yeah you know what i mean like that would be cool and we're just like huh i wonder where sunny is i don't know like you know what i mean so and uh i'm that, sorry i didn't know i'm sorry i didn't, I, I didn't mean that. oh no you're good you're good i just uh we didn't we hadn't really heard from him in quite a long time actually uh through the covid stuff and all that and, uh, you know, and then you just start hitting it hard again on Skrillex and everything. And I don't know, like, I've been producing like crazy. And Travis has, like, found his stride working at the uh, at a venue. He owns this, or runs this venue in L.A. And it's really dope. 1720, but, right? Uh, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, the venue's a shit, bro. Yeah, it's super sick. So, like, you know, I feel like, you know, we've all found our individual stride and everything. But more or less, we're just, you know, it's the same conversation we've been having for, like, five years. It's like, damn, dude, it'd be sick to do our band, you know? <laughs> the thing that we love doing. When when and you guys when you guys did make war and surrender, did you think that it was a chance Sonny was going to come back full time? Or, or did you know that it was kind of, like, temporary and you're back to full time after after these singles? To be completely honest with you, I never know what's going on with anything. <laughs> <We're> just, <laughs> like, that was, like, the result of Sonny calling me on his way to Coachella on FaceTime, and I hadn't talked to him in, like, eight years. And he was just like, let's do some shit. And I was like, cool, man. And then we did. And then we didn't. And I don't know. And I was just like, well, um, I'm tired of not doing stuff, so let's do stuff again. And that, it's really that easy. I know it sounds ridiculous because it's over such a long time and everything, but... That's honestly what it really comes down to at the end of the day. When when you guys write music, like regarding the newer stuff, example Genesis and I and I watched the Ryan Rex Rex interview, Warped podcast, all that. Uh, what's okay. your What's your process like? Do you demo stuff as yourself and then show Travis and Derek, or how do you create a song from scratch? Uh, that's basically what we've been doing lately. Because uh, like. I'm just so accustomed to writing songs in like my studio environment now. It's just kind of how I operate because, you know, I've been doing it a long time. I'd, I've come to realize that like far less FFTL fans know that I've been producing like pretty successfully than I thought they did. So it's been interesting kind of being like, oh, yeah, but this is what I always do. <laughs> you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm like, I literally have over 900 songs on ASCAP like published with, as a writer. So like, you know, I've been going pretty hard over the last while, you know? You've been hustling. And, and uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's usually just like, oh, I have an idea. I write a lot of stuff in my head, to be honest with you, like kind of early in the morning. And a lot of times I'll just be like, I don't know, I just had this idea for this epic sounding thing like this. And like, you know, I can kind of put the rest together when, I'm, when I have a guitar and my hands are like, you know, like a keyboard or whatever the fuck, you know? Do you, I have a fan question. I'm going to work in some fan questions during this. And uh, one of the fan questions were, there seems to be like a lot of like anime influence on Genesis. Like example, you just said you wake up and have a riff in your head or something like that. Does that come from you being inspired by something you watched the night before or something you were jamming in your, you know, just your spare time? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I am heavily inspired by like, um, things around me, like the environment around me, or whatever. Like, especially when I'm watching like movies and stuff like that. There's been so many songs we've written that were like direct emotional responses I had to like a piece of entertainment media, like either a, whether it be like an anime or a movie or whatever the fuck, you know. Um, because I feel like that's natural. You know what I mean? Like, uh, art 
is like a, an emotional expression in a lot of cases. And it makes a lot of sense to me personally when you think about it. Like, of course, you know, if you felt emotionally moved by something, it would want, it would make you like organically want to uh, reciprocate that feeling, I suppose, through sure. your music or whatever. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, totally makes sense. Uh, I want to do uh, some some old school questions while we work in and talk about the new stuff. Uh, okay. do, do you have a do you have a favorite warp tour memory of all time? Um, I'm trying to like because I've done five warp tours. I'm trying to do you've done a lot. <laughs> you've done a lot. But if there, is there like one memory or like moment that kind of stands out more than another? Um. I mean, definitely there's one, but it's not really as related to the band. But, like, um, that we used to have this poker group that would get together at the end of the night all the time. Was Kevin Was Kevin in that? I don't know. Maybe. Kevin but, the, Kevin Lyman? Uh, no, no, not really. No, never mind. No, he was, uh, no, he wasn't involved in that. I think that was maybe too debaucherous for him, to be honest. But, yeah. um... It was like, you know, it was like Matt from Avenged, like Fat Mike from NoFX, like uh, Shane from Silver Scene used to be there, you know, like a couple, you know, just like a lot of cool dudes like in bands and that we all like poker a lot. We just play uh, like cash games of uh, Texas Hold'em. And we did that on that one work tour quite a bit. It was really, really fun. I had a good time doing that. And it was just such like, a cool group of people coming together, like different generations and stuff. That is awesome. Does the, does the new font, like Deathcore font... For the band ha hold any weight as far as why the change of what the font looks like because it looks like shit's going to be heavy in the near near future with that font um no i just like the fonts like aesthetically pleasing like honestly i don't really like hold i don't put a lot of weight into things like that it's just like i just like design like i don't really care like what it's affiliated with that's why like we always had all kinds of black metal shit back in the day we've never sounded black metal it's just, you know, I'm, I, I appreciate different designs and styles, and I think that they all have, like, a charm to them, and sometimes they're cool and they're juxtaposed with different things, and I don't know. It's just this appreciating different stuff and implementing it into it. And plus, honestly, like, the one that we use, like, it's funny because it looks like a Slam logo, I guess, but it also kind of looks like Kingdom Hearts or something at the same <laughs> time because the color has got, like, a heart at the top of it and shit. I dig it. Uh, do you have a process of how you select the bands that you want to do production with as far as like the local guys, not like the Alexandrias and et cetera? Um, kind of, I guess. It's usually just like, do I vibe with you, your vision and what you're doing? And if I do, then it seems worth it to me usually. And then there's obviously the case too where it's like, oh, this band works with people that I also work with and so there's like a mutual interest involved and things like that but usually when that's the case it ends up being a bunch of people I really like a lot anyway so it's all I've been really lucky that it's worked out to where it's always been pretty great so all it really takes is just a badass demo sent your way we need a small story and uh, not necessarily having the connection but if you're feeling what they sent then if the timing works out and the budget's there it might be up your alley yeah of course yeah I mean, I definitely get the most inspired by bands that are either trying to do something that's, like, really pushing the limit on, like, what people are used to or what they can tolerate, I guess, you know, with, like, ideas of songwriting, production, et cetera, or whatever. Or if it's just, like, people that I can resonate with because they're ultra-driven and they have, like, a vision and a goal and they're determined and they're hard hardworking as fuck and, like, that inspires me as well, you know? Did uh, did Craig ever reach out regarding rejoining drugs as far as their the new stuff, or were you ever hit up or contacted about any, anything like that from Craig? Uh, no, I, yeah, no, I was not. Did that did that bother you? Because I feel like you were an important piece on the first record. Um, no, it doesn't bother me because I would have said no, so it's not really a big deal. For sure, but that's not me throwing shade or anything. It's just like that's I'm just not. That part of my life is over, and I'm okay with it. Cool. Uh, do you recall the worst show you've ever had as FFTL? Meaning, like, it could have been early in the sunny days or something more recent when maybe one of the first times you were front man, but the absolute worst show, everything went wrong. How did you learn from, for it, uh, from it, excuse me, 
as we have a bunch of small bands that watch these interviews and maybe they don't want to make that same mistake. Ah, okay. Actually, I have a great candidate for this one. We were on tour with Fall Boy, and it was a huge show because every show on that tour was huge. I mean, like, literally the smallest show was, like, 14,000 people or something. So. Wow. And we were outside, and both – we had a new guitar tech that day, and he had just started with me. And somehow, both of my amps, as I had a main amp and a backup amp, because believe it or not, bands used to actually have amps on tour. <laughs> that was the thing <laughs> you had to do, which, you know, in hindsight, wow, that sucks compared to now. But anyway, somehow both amps went bad. Like, the tubes blew in either the cramp tubes, or I have no idea. So this poor guy, he's, like, scrambling, trying to fix my amp. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck is going on? Because I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I have two amps. Like, we have a backup. Like, what is this guy? Like, is this guy right. have the worst luck on earth? Like, <laughs> everything worked as sound check. So, like, I think I played, like, at least half the set without an amp that worked. And I think at the end, they ended up stealing our other guitar player's backup head or something and bringing it over and letting me use it. But I was really mad because we were really, really um, thick headed i guess back then like we you know what i mean like we we had a really strong goal <laughs> and i was like that ruined the show and like you know in my head i was like this is so important and i was like 22 or whatever you know so i was an idiot and i was getting all mad at him and yelled at him and i believe i fired him and i think his first day yeah and it's funny because like in the moment i guess i could justify it because it's like dude this guy kind of fixed the problem like you need someone that can do it he's not like fast on his feet or whatever but like in reality i was just being an idiot and i was young and i shouldn't have done that but that's a good lesson to learn you know don't don't let your emotions get the best of you you know when, when you say goals what what would you say is your goals for the future of from first to last i i know that there's some more singles coming in the works can you can you tease us with anything that that we can get excited about and look to look forward to? Um, the goal for the future is just to continue putting out six songs and just to you know make do do what keeps us feeling like we get to be a part of the thing that we created over the course of our whole adult lives and because like honestly like. I want people to like the songs. Like, no one makes songs being like, well, I hope everyone hates this. But at the same time, I'm just super stoked that I still get to do that in general. And I feel like it's never been easier than it is now for us to just, like, make a sick song and put it out, which, you know, we just did. So um, I'm really, really happy about that. Looking forward to the future, doing that a lot more. And, like, you know. We're, we're not going to stop anytime soon, I don't think. There's really, there's literally no, and that's part of the reason why we're doing it like this now, is there's literally nothing that can make us stop anymore. Like, we will only stop if we decide to stop. You're full on independent now, correct? Yeah. That's exactly. awesome. So it's it's whatever you guys want to do. And Matt, I, we talked yesterday, you said that you had some hot sauce prepared for the trivia portion of the show. Oh shit, I forgot to bring up stage. Can I go grab it? Yeah, yeah, go grab it. No worries. All right, I'll be, all right, I'll be right back. Cool. If you bring some extra hot shit, I'm going to grab some extra hot shit behind me. But if you bring some Tabasco, we're going to go weak. It all depends on what he grabs. Uh, and we're going to get into some spicy questions in this segment right here. So it lines up. It lines up. You better not bring water. No, he knew. He knew. See all the stuff in the background, though? We got the, was the Hawthorne Heights something. Some Star Wars in the background right there. Looks like a bunch of cards on that middle shelf. I see a baby Yoda. Yeah, a lot of Star Wars stuff. I bet you he picked Star Wars on the trivia watch. He's gonna, he's gonna pick anime or Star Wars. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, I'm back. I grabbed some cinnamon habanero hot sauce that I have. I haven't even tried it yet. Okay. You so yeah. I was I was I was just telling Chad I was like if he brings Tabasco I'm gonna go weak but if he brings some good shit I'm gonna grab something pretty hot. Well, I do have like uh I have the hot one sauces downstairs too. Like if you want to get real fucking crazy, I, I got about fifteen behind me. So I got a ghost pepper, citrus mango, but I got a whole bunch of other options. It's on. It's your decision. I'll tell you what. Why not? Why don't we grab one or two more just in case? But tell me what your trivia topic is. Is there a movie or a TV show? that you've seen so many times, I look up this movie or TV show, there's no way I stump you. 
Regardless of uh, whether you get it right or wrong, I'm doing hot sauce. But if I stump you, we take a swig together. Is there? That's a good fucking question, actually. I'm not sure. Um, because I've seen a lot of movies a lot, a lot of times. I we noticed when you when you took off, there's a lot of Star Wars stuff going on in the background. Yeah, I saw I Baby like, Yoda. I see Boba Fett. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the picture up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've seen Star Wars a lot. Definitely a lot. <laughs> we could do that. Is there a particular Star Wars episode that you've seen more than the others? Yeah, probably Empire Strikes Back. That would work. That would work. Hey, so one of my favorite albums that you guys ever did, and I actually went to the only show that you played with Spencer for Dead Trees in L.A. Uh, okay. That that album was amazing. What actually happened with that? Why why wasn't Spencer long termed as the frontman? Um, it was kind of like this weird thing where um. So when I met Spencer, he was like super chill. I mean, he is, I don't want to start that that way. It sounds like I'm saying he's not now. He's still very fucking chill. I love Spencer. But um, he was at Taylor's studio, which is where we were recording, because he lived near there at the time. And I had heard this Periphery EP recently where they each wrote their own song on it. And I was like, damn, it's crazy. Like one of those songs, Spencer sounds a lot like we, like Sonny used to sound kind of, but like a more updated, aggressive version of it or something. And I was like, I'd be sick of me saying on a song. So Taylor's like, why don't you just ask him? He lives here. And I said, oh, that'd be cool. And then he said yes. And then we're like, damn, this, that was really fun. And like in the total normal vein of everything we ever do, I was like, why don't you just stick on the whole record? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, okay. But the problem was that we didn't consider the fact at the time at all which you know makes sense to me because why would we have i don't know why this would be at the front of our minds but we didn't consider the fact that like periphery was you know obviously still a full-time operational unit in his life and they um they didn't really love the fact that you know from their point of view we were basically like robbing them of their singer and his time you know what i mean which i completely understand now it just didn't feel that way when we were doing it but anyway it just made it to where it's like his time was split up, you know, quite a bit. And it just wasn't, you know, like we only did that one short tour and it wasn't really necessarily by choice. It's, you know, it was just Oh, like I thought it was just weeks. one show. I thought you guys did one show. Oh yeah. No, we did like a very short tour and it, it was kind of like a weird one. We didn't promote it. Right. And there was all kinds of dumb things going on, but um, basically it was just one of those things where it's just like, oh, it feels like life's pushing against us a little bit. And, but I mean, you know, it's all good. I fucking love Spencer. He's so talented. He's badass. And like, it was like, it was just like putting like a weird wedge between like us and Periphery, which I thought was weird because I've always loved them and I didn't want to have that going on either. So but I don't know. It just kind of like organically over time kind of just felt like, okay, I guess this isn't going to work out and that's okay. Well, that album's fantastic. So I'm glad you guys still were able to produce it. But Matt, it's time to yeah, stump you. Know. It's time to stump you, sir. Oh, okay. All right. You got to choose. And you chose Star Wars Empire Strikes Back. What is the name of the officer that brought the executor out of light speed to close the Hoth system? Mm, Admiral Tarkin? It is an Admiral that is not the correct name. I'll give you one more shot. Fuck. <laughs> Vader ends up killing him. Yeah, no, I know. I can see his face. I just don't remember his name right now. Uh, I think that's the stump. Admiral Pia? Yeah, something like that. That that is the stump. It's Admiral Ozell. 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 Cheers. All right. Will you just drink it right out of the bottle? Yeah, just just swig it. Yeah. Just. Okay. I got ghost pepper, citrus. Ooh. Citrus bacon. Ooh. It seems like a time to take a fan question. Oh, actually, this is legitimately hot. Mine's a little spicy too. So we're yeah, both this we're, is like... we're both suffering. Oh yeah, I see it. That looks legit. Looks like one of the, you get like the Pepper Palace or something like that. That's where this you is buy the Pepper Palace. Okay, I can tell. I've been to a bunch of them. Hell yeah. Is yeah. there is there a high quality B side for Save Us off of heroin? Uh, somebody wanted yeah. me to. Somebody wanted me to specifically ask that. I have absolutely no idea. Um, 
The oh. only person that would know the answers to that that I would trust is Ryan Rex. <laughs> he knows everything about you guys. It's crazy. I know. He knows everything. Yeah, because when I did that interview with him, he was like, were you ever in The Color of Violence? And I was like, yeah. But it was like a long time ago, but we recorded a demo and he found the demo. I'm like, what the hell do you... <laughs> yeah, he... he... He knows how to find all that shit on the internet. It's crazy. If you were hypothetically ever on death row, what would be your final meal? Hmm. Uh, probably ramen, but specifically from like a certain place in Tokyo. It wouldn't. It couldn't just be like March and ramen, like whatever. Is this a spot that you've been to on like a previous tour that you just fell in love with? Yeah, yeah. I've been there a bunch. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Really, really good. Have you guys ever been asked to play when we were young? Because I feel like you were like one of the bands that should have fucking been on that lineup, and it pisses me off. Yeah, no, we haven't been asked yet, but I, it's funny because like there was a lot of drama that I accidentally started about that. Um, but all good. Those guys are cool. I'm sure we'll do it eventually. I hope so. That'll be awesome. Uh, uh, when doing research for this, I I somehow missed as a as a Yay high tyke that you played Jimmy Kimmel back in the day when you performed two as one. What was the experience like for that? I imagine that was pretty, pretty freaking crazy. That was, yeah, it was definitely really crazy. Um, I remember like we got there and I was just like, damn, this feels like so out of my element. But at the same time, I was really excited. But it's super weird because you have fans in the audience, but they also they just have a bunch of people that are there. Just because they want to that be they don't the know your music at all. Yeah, yeah. Because right. they want to be they want to be at the show. They want to be at the filming. So people go to everyone, no matter what band's playing or what guest is there. They don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Mm. So they're like in the crowd. They're like, all right, everyone, when they start playing, you need to like jump around and like do whatever you know and stuff. And I was like, dude, this is so fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool. I was really stoked. I thought we sounded pretty good, especially because it was completely raw and live. I was like, all right. Yeah, it came out awesome. It came out yeah. awesome. Do you remember the name of the droid that takes care of Luke after he's attacked by the Wampa? This droid helps Luke recover after his attack. Oh, right, right. He's on Hoth yeah, when this occurs. Yeah, yeah. But that's just like a medic droid, isn't it? It doesn't specify like, on the trivia I'm looking at. I didn't know that it had a name. What the hell? What kind of questions are these? <laughs> <laughs> these are hard. I'll give you one more, but we'll call it another stuff. Remember, I, I got to do the hot sauce each time, too, so we're suffering together. Okay, wait, wait. What's the name? Oh, it was 2-1B. Okay, bro, come on. <laughs> Something easier for the next one. I got you. I got you. We'll give you one. We'll give you one. Do you have a, do you have a specific technique of how you do vocal warm-ups? And then, let's say, hypothetically, you have four shows in a row, four days in a row. How do you treat your voice to be ready for the next performance? Um, yeah, there's like this warm up shit you can do. And it's like 15 minutes of being like. The, like is that, that the Melissa Cross stuff? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a universal thing. But yeah, like it's just like different things is loosen, loosen you up, get you warm. And you kind of approach your higher notes gradually, a little bit at a time. Usually like that. Um, there's some worn downs you can do after you're done singing, which I think are actually the most beneficial. I just never really did them because whatever. But when I did do do them, I'm like, damn, these are really nice, actually. And then, um, yeah, you just like during the day, I wouldn't yell very much. I wouldn't yell at all. And I wouldn't talk more than I really needed to, especially if I, you know, if I felt taxed, I'd calm it down. Um, and then just also, you know, you can just get hammered and drink a ton of whiskey and that works too. Excellent. Excellent. I can dig that for sure. Um, <laughs> is there, is there a song in the FFTL catalog that you always felt was underappreciated for some reason? <clears throat> any album? Uh, any album as a whole? Any album as a whole, anything in your whole catalog. I mean, I kind of want to say... I don't know. It's weird. I, it's like I feel like there's a mix of feelings between Throne and Heroin, but Heroin is less underappreciated, I suppose. I mean, it did well, but like 
it's weird. It's not what people wanted to hear, right? So like, it's different. But in reality, the album's like a crazy work of art. Like, there's it could never be replicated. There's just no way. It's, it's like it'll stand the test of time, I think, realistically. But and then Throne of the Wolves, it, I don't. I feel like it's underappreciated a little bit, just strictly out of like performance numbers or whatever the hell you want to, you know. But like at the same time, people always are like, "Dude, that's the coolest record." That still fuck with our band. So I'm like, okay, I mean, maybe it's not underappreciated. Maybe it's just underknown about. <laughs> I don't know. Undiscovered. It is a masterpiece, and it like I, I agree with you on. A, I don't think anyone expected it coming off of Dear Diary, but at the same time, it's it's so flawless and unique and. And it, like you said, it can't be replicated. It, it's so, it's such a cool, fun album for sure. Do you have yeah. a uh, a favorite and least favorite tattoo? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, let me think. Maybe Probably show us your like... first tattoo. Do you remember your first one? Oh, definitely. It's this one right here. The okay, star the, the nautical stars. I got one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then my favorite tattoo, I think Matt Manning actually did it, and it's my cat with a Star Wars helmet on. Hell yeah, Cat Vader. Yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah, yeah, it was funny. And she had like a, well, she's dead now, but she had like a, a fucked up eye, so it has like her fucked up gray eye and everything. It's pretty cool. Yeah, R.I.P. Um, R.I.P. Chloe. In, in the song Back to Hanalei, like when, when you guys were working on Dead Trees and you, you told the story about how Spencer came to join for that album, was that already lyrically written? Or, or did he hand do the lyrics for that? Did you have any influence in that particular song? For me, that's one of my favorites uh, on that particular record. I'm just wondering if that resonated with you. And what exactly is Hanalei? Hanalei is a town that Spencer grew up in. And in terms of lyrics, I think he wrote all the lyrics on that record. So it was just like a personal thing that he did. I did all the music for it and everything. But yeah, he just... Uh, he took it and did something really cool, and we were like, "Damn, you sound sick on this, bro." <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, is someone wanted me to ask if there's any stories you may have never shared in any view, uh, interview ever regarding the Pestilence music video shoot? Oh, hmm. I know it's a while back, but do you remember anything that you may not have shared in a different interview regarding that that video shoot? Um. Honestly, nothing that was like really stand out is because like the, the note to self video, there's some funny things, but that video was pretty, it, for one, it was our first real video and we had to drive out to the desert to a movie set area where they do, you know, Western films and all that. And that was really cool. I mean, that was really sick to see. And then we had real actors in it. I was like, wow, this is crazy. Like, but you know, like we did our thing, you know, we looked like fucking scene kids in the middle of a Western desert. Which <laughs> was insane. Um, and then at the end. Uh, we were filming out by like a swamp or something, and uh, we had like all these lights out there and shit. And I was like, "Man, this is wild." I think we'll, I, we definitely got like wet out there, but like like I said, like nothing that was really crazy happened on that. It just felt like it took forever. But when we got it back, we were pretty excited. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, that video, that video is. I remember seeing when I first watched it, seeing Sunny puke uh, in the video that was kept in the clip, which was always cool. Do, yeah, do you, you gotta keep that. Do you? Yeah, of course. Uh, do you anticipate after, I'm, I'm assuming that another single is coming very soon after Genesis or that's all like mapped out and planned out in the future. Can we expect the boys to do a little run here in California and maybe some other States, uh, as far as some gigs go? I mean, we have nothing planned as of now, but I will say that, uh, I've been thinking about it a lot and like. I don't know in what capacity or whatever, but like I do know I have the itch. I want to play some shit live, so you know, hopefully we can make it happen. You never the biggest the thing. Itch. The biggest thing we have to do to make it happen, realistically, is just keep kicking ass and showing people that you know have the power over those situations that we our band people want to see. You know what I mean? And then if we prove that to be the case, then it gets much easier from there. But for now, you know, it's like new kind of thing going on with the band. And I mean, Genesis has been performing really well, so that's good. As long as we keep it up, I have a feeling it will be no issue whatsoever. Do you have a rough timetable for the follow-up single? Like, can we expect another one before the end of the year? Oh, yeah. 
So more than one maybe before the end of the year. Maybe. <laughs> I hope so. That would be awesome. <laughs> Final trivia for Star Wars. I need you to complete the quote. Han Solo is going to make a quote right here. There isn't enough life on this to fill a space cruiser. I think I know this one. Luke and Han are sent to Hoth to see if there's any life on the planet that their uh -huh. rebel base is on, is the cue. I'll repeat the quote. Han Solo says, there isn't enough life on this to fill a space cruiser. I think it's just rock, right? You're so close. It does fit in your hand, but it's not a rock. <laughs> it fits in your hand, but it's not a rock? Uh, what the hell? Chad has already gotten it. Yeah, I'm sure they did. Dude, I fucked up. I should have picked something I've watched in the last five years. Um, It goes in a... It's cold. Ice cube? That is correct! It is Give ice cube! Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll take it. We'll take it. Hell yeah. Uh, Matt, this is fun. Uh, I want to end on a serious topic. Final question, and thank you for so much for your time. Uh, yeah. What is what is a moment where you had a learning experience before the band blew up? Can you can you give advice to uh, a, a mistake you made or you spent money a certain way that you shouldn't have put the budget this direction? Anything before the band, you know, I, the label takes care of stuff. What advice could you give to some local bands? Oh, like in terms of like, yeah, okay. Um... We didn't really ever run into that, to be honest with you, but I can, you know, I can try and give some advice. Like one thing that we did is that we always just put our money towards whatever it took to get us to our goal, either the fastest or the most proficient. So like in our case, we had like some money that we had earned. So we spent all of it on tour. You know what I mean? Whether it be like, just to like, go to be able to go on the tour is what you put yeah. the money on. Okay. We saved all that was step one. We saved all of our money to put ourselves in a position where we can go on tour and not die. Right. I mean, got close a few times. So I swear to God, like we ate out of dumpsters, we had to steal food sometimes. Like it was bad, you know what I mean? But we did it. Um and then after that it was like, where do you want to put your money? It's like we were the people that were every single time the opportunity came around, we'd reinvest. We'd reinvest in either or production live, like, you know, whether it be like, you know, like in-ear monitors or lights to make our show more fun or whatever, or like a better crew, you know, like, cause like we started off having only like basically a roadie and a merch guy and he'd help us drive and stuff. But eventually we wanted a real tour manager. So we got that and that's money. You know what I mean? Like it is a person, but it's in your budget. So like every time the opportunity came around, we would reinvest it. We would make like no money ourselves. And I remember our manager used to tell us all the time, he's like, don't worry guys, money's right around the corner. Cause like he knew like, if we, cause at the rate we were doing things, like all that reinvestment was paying off. Cause like the shows kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger mm -hmm. and bigger. And he's like, eventually it all pays off. And then you're, you're where you want to be, but you just have to like really trust in the process and your vision and just like stick with it and like you know it might get you down sometimes like you might be sitting there being like why am i eating a bologna sandwich on white bread still like i just sold out a 500 cap room or something but it just is what it is you know you just have to have faith in what you're doing well we appreciate the wisdom genesis is fantastic we look forward to the other singles you're a legend sir god bless you thank you for doing this i greatly appreciate it and uh we, we wish you the best man for real Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on here. And uh, maybe I'll talk to you again when the next song comes out. I hope so. That'll be awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Good of Refresh the Last. Yeah, hell yeah. Cheers, brother. Enjoy your day. Thank you. You too.